What's up divas and what's up divos? It's your girl April and of course it is Real Talk Wednesday. So before we even get started, as you guys know, if you have a real talk real talk topic that you'd like to discuss over the world wide web with our nosy divas and divos here, then you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com and please make sure to put in the subject line real talk so that I know that it is a real talk video. So for the hair that I've got on, this is some hair that I made back in probably like May. Um, I can't remember offhand the name of the hair um, site that sent it to me, but I will post a video for this below as well as the hair specifications that I use to make this wig. But yeah, so I decided to pull it back out. Um, I have only wore it a few times, but their hair is like gorgeous. Um, really nice hair. And if you hear that wind blowing, that's my fan. Because you guys already know I get really hot, like dumb hot. That's even cool to say anymore, dumb hot. You know how like we used to say that back in the days? Yeah. So anyway, let's begin with this real talk right now. Hi, I have already changed my name to Alexia. So like three months ago, my mom got into a car accident, which stopped me from going to university in Kansas City. I now go to the community college up the street so I can be close to home to take care of my mom. But before this, I had and have the best boyfriend in the world walk into my life. I graduated from high school and I have an amazing best friend. So after the accident, my, so after my mother's accident, my life was changed. I basically became a mom to my mother and was doing everything for her. I literally did everything for her. That way that we take that we take excuse me i literally did everything for her that we take for granted for example help her walk eat use the bathroom take a bath and lie down amongst other things which made me become distant from my friends gain weight and get depressed my mother's accident has put her where she can't work and i have to now pay the bills and my checks are no more than 250 dollars a check by the way that only covers one bill which leaves me with no money to get my nails done, hair done, or buy toiletries. Since I have to work like a slave, try and pull A's, and be an amazing girlfriend, I haven't talked, hung out with, or partied with my bestie in three months. She has now become clingy and rude about us not hanging out. My mom was having one of her really bad days on the day, on the day when my bestie was having her apartment housewarming turn-up party, which made me miss it. Ever since then, she wouldn't answer my calls or call back. I know I should have been there, but my mother has always been there for me, and I want to be there for her in her time of need. I know for my age, which is 18, I have my, priori my priority straight, but, ble but please tell me, I'm not in the wrong in this. What should I do? I feel guilty when I leave my mom at home and go party. Should I go and turn up, or am I right to do what I'm doing? Help me. Thanks in advance for helping me, and I really appreciate it greatly. P.S. I love your YouTube channel. You give me great ideas and tips, so when I get paid and my mom can work, I can be fabulous again. So, Alexia. Alexia has, it's really not a problem. Um, her mom, her poor mom was in an accident, a bad accident, three months ago. And so, being that her mom is in an accident, I guess it's just her and her mom. She has taken on the responsibility of being a mother figure, or just... A home caregiver to her mom she takes her um, to the bathroom she bathes her she makes sure she eats basically she does everything for her mom that is needed to do as well as she's transferred from the university to a community college and she also works and pays the bills and she's feeling kind of left out of a lot of things because she's only 18 and she's missing out on activities that 18 year olds do which is turn up have a good time, party with their friends, and just basically hang out. So her bestie is basically, Alexia's bestie, is kind of like ignoring her now because she didn't come to her apartment warming party, which was a turn-up party, because her mother was not having a great day. So what should she do? Is she feeling like she should be in the wrong for this? What should she do? 
So, first of all, Alexia, I will tell you this much. You are in no way, in no shape or form, in the wrong for what you're doing. We only have one mother. And for those who are, of us who don't have a mom and never got to meet their mother, we've had someone in our lives that's very close to us like a mother. So it still goes to say, you only got one mother in this world. And one father, too. But we're talking about your mother in this situation. So, um, you only have one mother. And... She's taking care of you all your life, the, the, the 18 years of your life. And I'm pretty sure that when your mother gets better and when she's able to take care of herself, she's going to look out for you and make sure that everything is good with you. Not saying to do this for your mom because she's going to look out for you, but you do this because that's your mother, number one. That the love that you have for her and the love she has for you. And that's your mom, okay? First and last, it's your mom. That's your mom. So as for your best friend, I wouldn't even really want to call her best friend right about now because she acting real shitty. I'm pretty sure she knows your mother's situation and the situation that you're going through. And for her to not be understanding is kind of like some ludicrous bullshit on some real shit. Like, if that was my best friend for me, I would be over there trying to help out. Like, you know what? You're trying to study and go to work. Let me check in on your mom and see how she's doing. Let me go and help you. Let me help. What do you need help with? There's always a way to help one another. And yeah, true indeed, you might have missed the turn up, but baby, you 18. There ain't but so much turning up that you can do at that age. And then again, you can. You could do a lot of turning up. You could probably do more turning up than I can. But I'm legal. Okay, so I'm a legal age. But here's the thing. You're only 18. You got a whole lifetime of turning up to do. But you only got one mother. And your best friend, she really not acting like a best friend. She's acting like a crabby brat right about now. She's having a temper tantrum because you didn't show up to her turn up house party. So what? Things happen. Shit happens. And I'm pretty sure that if it was her mother, she wouldn't have been able to come to your housewoman party either if her mother was in the same situation. So for one, if she doesn't want to answer your calls, don't keep calling her because the phone works both freaking ways the phone works both ways and if she can't call you and give you the respect and understanding like hey how's your mom doing i understand you couldn't come but i'm still concerned and i'm still here for you if she can't do none of that then that's a friend that you really don't need a lot of people try to choose pick and choose their friends and they feel like well because she was here all of this time she my friend she gonna always be my friend because she's been down with me since day one or we went to kindergarten together that's not really a excuse to be friends with somebody still because you could have been down with her since day one friends since kindergarten but she might have grown up and got to become a real asshole and then you're total opposite that doesn't mean that because y'all grew up together means y'all gotta stay the best of friends friendships grow apart people grow apart people grow into their own things okay and it seems like your friend is very selfish and just all about herself yeah it was a housewarming party but i'm pretty sure that she's gonna have some more that hopefully you get to go to but in the meantime you're not wrong for what you're doing you have one mother if you don't take care of her who's going to take care of her and diva alexia here's the thing you're working and you're paying for everything in your household have you ever gotten in touch with anybody like a nurse's aide go to social services for your mom because your mother's not working right now so i'm pretty sure she has no income being that you're using all of yours and you have one income now you're in college you're a full-time student so your income that you work for does not count so that means that you guys can get some type of assistance. And I know this because I used to work for Medicaid in New York for nine years. For Fidelis, that's what part of Medicaid was. So we go by income and things. So for one, your mother and you can get some assistance because like I said, you're a full-time student, so your income does not count. You know, they are going to look at your income, but it doesn't count towards things. So you guys can get help with paying these bills, okay? Maybe some food stamps if you guys are running low on food. But most importantly, a nurse, a daytime nurse to come in and look after your mother while you're in school. She may not be able to come every day, but your mother does need a caregiver besides you who will be able to take care of her while you're at work and you're at school. You cannot be there for everything. So I really think that this is a good opportunity for you right now and a good idea to take a look into like the Department of Social Services and see what benefits and services that you can get for your mom because it's really important for her to have someone come and look after her. And yeah, true indeed, you are 18. You have your priorities and straight and they're in order and all of this good stuff. But your mother really does need somebody professional that can look in after her, even with you there because we don't want her to get bed sores 
or just any sicker or you know things of that nature or depressed and now your depression because you say you've gained weight and you're depressed because you're sitting at home and you're helping and you're working and you're paying bills so I really think that it's a good idea for you to contact someone at like family services or department of social services even if you go to your college and go to the office and let them know of your situation with your mom they have so many resources and outsources that they can contact or help you get into contact with that it'll be so beneficial for you but you cannot get any help until you help yourself so the main thing is to first of all stop worrying about your friend she ain't really no best friend if she ain't concerned about your mother's well-being and your well-being and all she concerned about is turning up then fuck her for real fuck her because if that was my friend i would make sure that her mother was all right i wouldn't even feel right as a person not making sure that my best friend's mom was all right regardless of how long we've been best friends i wouldn't feel right you know what i'm saying because that's what friends are for that's what friends do that's what people do that's what family does we help one another and we show care and love to one another but if you want to get an attitude and not answer your phone then bitch please don't even answer that shit because i ain't even gonna call no more anyhow so answer it for the next people don't worry about her because you have more things on your plate to handle the first thing i would do though is i would definitely get in touch with department of social services so that way i could see what i could get in involved in to help and benefit my mom so maybe she could get better quicker but i would start off at school when you go to school the next time go to the administration office ask them tell them your situation let them know you need help some type of help what can they do to help you or where can they point you to in the right direction so that way you can get started and this to help you and your mama it's great that you're taking care of your mom and you're paying the bills and you know what she's probably so appreciative more appreciative than you can ever imagine but you need a little bit of help too because you are still a child you are still a child and you're in a child trying to handle a grown folks world and baby let me tell you something that shit is hard as hell when you gotta try to figure it all out okay and some things are just thrown on your lap all at once you know you didn't accumulate you didn't come into this gradually this was all thrown onto your lap so it is overwhelming and I could totally get it and I totally understand it but you need to start off with going to your office of administration in your school your community college and getting some help and letting them know your situation from start A to start Z and let them know this is what I'm dealing with and this is what I need assistance with can you point me in the right direction that's it and for your party life, honey, you 18. You got more than enough time. You can't even really get in the club. Excuse me, I got hiccups. You can't even really get in the club anyway. So house parties, sometimes things are, are for a reason. You didn't make that party for a reason, okay? There's always a reason behind something. And you may not see it at first, but there is. It could either be to keep you out of harm's way, because sometimes house parties turn out like that, or to let you see what type of friends you really have now i'm thinking it's both okay i'm thinking it's both your friend to show her true colors just like cindy lapa said true colors shining through okay so let alexia know what would you do in this situation you know what i mean she's concerned she's feeling overwhelmed depressed gained weight friends picking at her mom needs help she didn't really have no money left to do anything but pay bills. And as far as not getting your hair and nails done, Diva, let me tell you some things. Some things have to be pushed to the back burner, okay? It's not always important to get your nails done. Shit, I don't even get my own nails done. That's because I just don't like them. It's I just don't have the patience to sit there in the chair and let them freaking dig in my nail beds because then my, my hands be sore for like three days. And on top of that, I got to make wigs. I ain't got time for all of these nails getting in the way of creating nothing, so... Alrighty. Hi April, I just watched your divorce video and I had to subscribe. Thank you for sharing your truths. Now I need to get some advice from you because it seems like some of the things you have gone through I have as well. I'm almost 36 and I have been with my husband 19 years, married for 8 of those years. We have 3 girls from 15 years old to 2. Now my husband went to prison for 4 years, released in 2010. The first 2 years were so hard for me, I ended up cheating with someone I knew when I was 15. I was lonely, hurt, and just needed to feel wanted and desired, I guess. I justified it by telling myself that if my husband can cheat on me when he was here, out and free, then my cheating on him while he was in prison wasn't that bad. Anyway, I ended up, well, the streets ended up telling him about my affair. It was hard in the beginning when he came home, but he said he forgave me and he wanted things to work. 
Well, here we are six years after the affair, and he still can't get over it. We can be arguing about why the kids didn't take baths yet, and it ends up in an argument about me cheating on him while he was locked down. I am so drained at this point, I don't even have the desire or energy to continue with this marriage. I know things will never be the same. Is this the end of the road, or is a new and improved love possible? We call ourselves trying, but we both don't know what it takes because we always end up back and forth at square one. What are your thoughts on men cheating? What are your thoughts on men cheating? We're expected. Um, what are your thoughts on men cheating? We're expected to suck it up, forgive, and keep loving them like shit didn't happen. But when we fuck up one time, it's the end of the world. I need advice from someone who's been through it. Help, April. Laugh out loud. Where is my happiness? So. Sincerely, where is my happiness? So, Miss Happiness, Miss Happiness has been married for some time. Eight years, been with the nigga for 19. He has been in jail. Okay, got out. They got some kids together. She cheated on him while he was locked down. He cheated on her when he wasn't locked down. So, six years later, after the affair, he's still bringing it up about some bullshit. It could be anything. Oh, why didn't the kids take a bath? Oh, because you cheated on me six years ago. So she's feeling drained and I feel she's feeling like hopelessless, hopeless, hopeless in Seattle. Like there is no working left to do. So. Hmm. This kind of sounds like a John and April scenario. You know, my ex-husband, John. This kind of reads like that for real. So. Yeah, when she asked me the question, what are we supposed to do? Suck it up and forgive and forget and keep loving their ass and act like shit didn't happen when they cheat. And then when we cheat on them, it's like the end of the fucking world. And you know what, Miss Happiness? You are so damn right about that, okay? So, did he cheat on me? Yeah, he cheated on me like twice. I, I know he did, but I was trying to think how many times. Yeah, so, yeah, he cheated on me like twice. Okay, and for a while I didn't get over it. I put him out and he kept sniffing around, kept coming back, sleeping in my driveway in his car for like days on end, shit like that. And I was so heartbroken, you know what I mean? But I still let him sleep in his car in my driveway, in my backyard, driveway, whatever you want to call it. Um, then he cheated on me when I was pregnant with our first child. That was the first cheat. So, yeah, that was the first cheat. The last cheat was back in 2000 and. 12. January 5th, 2012 was when I caught his ass at the movie theater. I didn't catch him. My oldest son, Jerron, caught him at the movie theater while my son and his girlfriend were sitting there watching the movie. The movie didn't start yet, but you know how the lights start dimming. Here comes my ex-husband. Well, he was my husband at the time. Sits in the row right in front of my son and his girlfriend. But they're in the very row right in front of him, but to the, to the right, and my son is to the left. So, you know, my son is texting me, like, uh, yeah. And then I'm like, oh, word, texting back. And then me and Tati, my daughter, we like, okay, putting on our boots and our hats. And my flashlight, because that's right, a bitch is going in the movie theater with a flashlight. Because I'm about to find your ass, your scandalous ass. However... He must have sensed that my son was behind him or something or another because he left the girl sitting in the movie before the movie was started. Maybe he said he was going to get some popcorn or go to the bathroom. Who even knows? But he left her sitting there and never came back, okay? So when I got to the movie theater, wasn't nobody there but that female. So I left and I met up with him. He got to this big ordeal. Of course, you know, my older son got involved in it because I'm his mother and you're not about to cheat on his mother, okay? And then I'm seeing you, like, long story short, he cheated on me twice and I did cheat on him while he was in jail, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Shit happens. It's, and if you're a fuck up and you continue to fuck up and you want to go in and out of jail, what do you expect? What do you expect? Um, and the person that I cheated on him with is the person who I'm with now. My son's father. So, whatever. But, it wasn't even really a cheat. We didn't even cheat. We didn't sleep together. We just became really cool and really tight. But he considers it cheating. And, never let it down. Like, never let it down. But, we are supposed to forgive and forget. 
Ain't nobody worried about you, John. Okay, so you ain't got to worry about sneaking around at the movie theater no more. Um, if you're not even in jail by now, who knows where he's at? Haven't called his kids in like three months. Um, three months. So he's probably arrested for drinking and driving again. Mm -hmm. So you're drained. Y'all arguing. I can relate to that because, and that would be me though. We would be arguing about some shit, me and him. And I'll be, you know, I would just blurt out from like the very first cheat, which was like in 2002, I would say. And that's a long time. I would say shit like, oh, that's why you got a dirty dick because you was fucking that dirty fat bitch. And yeah, you're a dirty dick motherfucker. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I would say shit like that. And it would be like from 10 years ago. But you know what? We do stuff like that, Miss Happiness, because sometimes we don't have anything to combat with you know what i'm saying so like your husband and me we're bringing up old shit like seriously old shit and we're throwing it in your face because we don't really have anything to combat with and sometimes it makes us feel good to hurt another person's feelings like your feelings and i know that hurts your feelings because i know in my heart that when i would say mean things to my ex-husband about his cheating that i should have forgotten if not forgotten but forgive forgiven him for and i mean i sh i didn't have to forgive him but we still were together so i mean obviously but i say those things to him i used to say those things to him because i wanted to strike him where it hurt real bad because once i say that to you there's nothing you can argue with me back. You can't say anything back to me. If I tell you you're a fucking dirty dick and you're a cheating scumbag, what are you going to say after that? You and him are arguing about giving the kids a bath and washing the kids up, and then he blurts that out. What are you going to say? There's really nothing left to say. So we say those things to come kind of like hurt your feelings and just get the argument over and done with because we really want to have the last thing to say and that is kind of like the worst thing to say but there's really no words to come back after that because you know what you're in the wrong you're the guilty party like yeah i did cheat you know what you got it you got it i'm waving the white flag however he cheated on you too so here's the thing you feel drained sweetheart i felt drained okay suck up dry okay sucked up dry and the only thing that was keeping me going was my kids i kept trying to justify everything with these are my kids father and i want them to be with their father and their mother because my mom and my dad were divorced when i was like four and i didn't have this is what i kept trying to justify with regardless and i would try to force myself into loving him more than i are that i did because my feelings, I loved him, but I wasn't in love with him. My feelings weren't there like that anymore. It was to me kind of like, I'm only here because we have these daughters together. Other than that, you can go. And then sometimes in my mind, it would make me feel like, who else is going to want me? I have five kids. I live in this crappy ass town. Okay, who else is going to want me? There's nobody out here to be with. Who else is going to want me? I'm just going to just be stuck with him and just try my best to make it work. And this is the things that will go through my head. And this is how I would feel. And I would convince myself, like, nobody's ever going to love me the way he does. No one's ever going to love my kids the way he does. No one's ever going to treat me good the way he does. Dumb stuff like that. This is how I would feel. And this is how I would convince myself. And, and lo and behold, I really didn't even want to be there. When he would go to work, I would be so happy. Like, oh, good, he's not here. I ain't got to look at his face. He ain't got to breathe around me. And then when he would come in, I wouldn't even want to say hello to him. You know how some couples, when the husband comes home or the wife comes home, whoever, they walk in the door, hey, babe, how was your day? I would be like, hey, what's up, and keep it moving. That's, that's, how, I would, that's how I would treat him. Because I really didn't have, like that vibe anymore for him and i can't really tell you what to do like leave him alone leave him because this is your life and this is your relationship i only can tell you how i felt and what i would do and what i would go through um he got so bad that you know like i had my husband my ex-husband sleeping on the couch downstairs for two years like because i didn't want him in the bed with me i didn't want to have sex with him um i didn't want to like have a relationship anymore and it only had to do with my kids 
and sometimes when he would talk to me I would just get irritated so he would just make my skin crawl like oh I cannot stand him and I never thought that I would feel that way about anybody especially one that I marry and I always told myself he's the last person I'm gonna be with I'm gonna be with him for the rest of my life blah 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 blah, blah, blah. dumb shit like that I would say to myself and then I still loved him but in my mind I did love somebody else too you know which was my ex we were the best of friends me and him and we just got along really well we kind of lost communication with each other but I still care for this person and I still care for my husband so I was kind of like caught in the middle or whatever and I didn't even want anybody at that point I, I just wanted to be by myself and be left the fuck alone with nobody to bother me especially not my ex-husband his drinking his unbroken his broken promises and all of this shit just was like so much for me like I just could not take it anymore and I wouldn't do things for him like I used to like I wouldn't take him anywhere I wouldn't drive him anywhere like he didn't have a car I had two cars he didn't have a car he didn't have a license he was always drinking and driving I didn't let him use my truck I wouldn't let him use my truck I wouldn't let him drive my car because I've had my cars towed enough you've crashed a couple of them so this was not me being vindictive but this was me being responsible like figure this shit out then he would have little problems with, oh, I got to pay these tickets, but you ain't trying to help no, you ain't trying to help a nigga pay for them. I don't have to help you pay for your fucking tickets that you got because you driving with no license, you drinking and driving. That's not my responsibility. I have other things to deal with in life. That's your responsibility. Take care of it. I don't give a fuck if you take the bus for the rest of your life. So I felt really bitter toward him and I really started disliking him. And then finally on January 6th of 2013, he showed his true colors with his drinking and shit and we just got into it. And once he went and once we got into it and he got arrested for drinking and a, and this a violence and shit like verbal a, um, verbal attacking me and physically attacking me and he was taken away. He went to jail. I finally could breathe and I was just like so relieved and so happy that it was done and over with like for real like that last situation with me and my ex-husband was so bad that it was in the newspaper in my little ass town it was in the newspaper you know what I mean and I was just so happy to be relieved of him you know he try to apologize and one day I will explain it all to you guys because it's a long story I will explain it all to you guys but it has a lot to do with his drinking it it all has to do with his drinking but it was a long overdue sigh of relief that I had finally and it's so sad that it had to come to terms like that with him but I just got tired of doing a lot of things I paid 80% of the bills I cleaned I cooked it just was overwhelming and I was done and I was through and I was dried up and just, just, ugh. I couldn't take him and his bullshit anymore. And I just didn't want him around me. And I never thought that I could be fine without him. But I am so fine and so happy without him right now. Like, even if I wasn't with someone, I would still be happy. You know what I mean? I've, I've went without having a relationship, a man, for years, okay? And sometimes we need that breather just so we can get ourselves together. And even though they're in jail and you may feel like that's your breather, it's really not. Because you're still focused on them and you still got to help them out. So when you're by yourself, then you get a chance to breathe and get your shit together. So trying to work things out, it's always nice to try to work things out. Especially if they're fixable and they can be worked out. But if you guys feel like you guys are just going back to square one where you're back and forth and you're not getting along and you guys are not having sex and you guys are constantly arguing and stuff, then there's time when maybe, you know what, maybe we should separate for a while and, and see where this leads us. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say, hey, go for the divorce because I was separated. You know, I moved in Arizona, moved out of New York to Arizona. So we were separated for two years and then I finally got the divorce. I don't know when I would have gotten a divorce, but eventually maybe one day I would have. But I finally did and I'm happy that I did. But I, never, I know for a fact that being that I moved here, I was never going to go back to him. And he was not about to come to my house in Arizona, not after that last situation. But I do think, Miss Happiness, that... You know, I've had a lot of conversations with my ex-husband where it's not working out. And, you know, we have come to terms with that. But then 
we just go back to okay well you can stay here I love you blah 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 but sometimes you just can't fake it always to make it really you just can't the love may be there but it's not there you know what I'm saying your heart is not in it anymore but you still love the person because you've been with them so long and maybe in your heart you just can't do this anymore and what about him where's his heart at you know what I mean maybe you guys need to have a good long talk and see where you guys both are at in this marriage before you walk away from it because I would never want my advice to break up anybody's happy home or not happy home but maybe can become a happy home again you know what I'm saying but I would never say stay into a miserable relationship because you got kids together and because y'all been together for so long don't do that because that's what I was saying like oh I've been with him for 16 17 years now I'm not going nowhere that's too much time invested with somebody so I'm gonna just stay with him this is the things that used to come out of my fucking mouth in my head like to myself like yeah I'm gonna stay with him because of this and because of that no you don't stay with anybody because of those reasons because those are really not great reasons and because of the kids well the kids don't really need to see you guys bickering back and forth with each other like a bunch of wild animals because that makes it no better on the kids and trust and believe mumsy used to go through hell when we would be arguing she would run upstairs and close the door in her room because it just bothered her and you know what that was nobody's fault but mine and i should have been let it go you know and so it affects your kids too and it's not a happy home do you may think it's not happy for you and him but you got three girls in there and you have to show them you know like hey we are women and we can't be treated this way and this is not the way a relationship goes and this is not how a marriage is supposed to be so you got to realize you may think you're unhappy but what about your kids they probably like really unhappy when they hear mommy and daddy arguing because that shit ain't cool so what you do Miss Happiness is you do what you feel is right in your heart. Don't stay somewhere where you don't feel it's comfortable and it's not pleasant. Don't stay because, oh, y'all been married or y'all been together for X, Y, Z. Um, y'all have X, Y, Z amount of kids and this and this and that. That's not an excuse. That's an excuse. That's not a good enough excuse. It's just an excuse. Excuse. And it's really not an excuse either. Me, per se, you see... I should have been left a long time ago, but I stood around and acted like everything was okay and all good and like it was going to get better. When in reality, it really, really wasn't. It was just the same bullshit, just a different day. You know, they act real cool when they come home from jail. They say they're not going to drink and drive. They're not going to drink. I, I I haven't had a drink in such and such time. Yeah, motherfucker, that's because your ass is in jail. Since when are they giving out vodka and Bacardi and Hennessy in jail? Yeah, of course you didn't have nothing to drink. You're in jail. But, you know, it'd be like a whole bunch of broken promises and shit like that. And I just, I really don't tolerate none of that shit right now. So, Miss Happiness, I wouldn't say tolerate it. But I would really sit there and think to myself. And when you have some private time, write down what is the good reasons of staying with this relationship. And what is the good reasons of leaving. And see what you come out with. You know what I mean? And you can always get a divorce for free. I did mine for free. And I'm feeling free. And I'm really happy. Do I love my husband? A lot of people ask me, don't you, lo you love him? You got ex-husband? Uh, yeah, I do. I, I care for him. I can't say I'm in love with him. Um, if he was to call me up and, and try to apologize for all the things he's done. And he, he was changed and yada, yada, yada. I would be happy for him that he's changed. And I would be happy for his kids that he's changed. But I wouldn't give a damn if it was a change. Because it's not going to affect me none. Because I've moved on with my life. Um, some people don't like to go backwards. I don't either. But, you know, the person that I went backwards with. We were together since we were kids. Um, so, young kids. So, it's like, a young teen. So, it's like, okay, you know what? I love him. He loves me. He was an asshole when we was young, and I was an asshole too. I wasn't really that much of an asshole, but you know what I'm saying? People change, and I think I've given my ex-husband more than enough time, and I just really don't have it in me. I don't have the energy, and I would just be happy that he stopped drinking and do something with his life. Other than that, I could care less, and you know what, Miss Happiness, you got to feel that way too. You got to feel happy inside and be who you are, and do this for you and your daughters. Don't go along with some shit because that's your husband and y'all been together. You know what I'm saying? Is there is there real love ahead for you? You'll never know unless you find out. You'll never know unless you take that leap and try it out. You'll never know. 
You'll never know. Just like I said, oh, nobody's going to want me because I have five kids and there's nobody in this little raggedy ass town. So I might as well stay with him. This is how I felt. And then when I came to Arizona, you know, I met a couple of people. You know, I have my good friend um, out here, Nicole. And I and I had a dude that I was messing with. He was so cocky, though. When I say cocky, I'm not talking about down there. Okay, I'm talking about, oh, I think I'm all that type of cocky attitude. He was nice looking, okay. He was. He was built, nice looking from Jersey and everything. But he was so cocky. His attitude was just so cocky because, you know, he was built. And nobody has time. Dude, go ahead with that because you was just one thing that I only wanted was one thing from you and that was it and that's bad because then I'm acting like the boy in the relationship because I only wanted the booty call from you but you know what sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do you need what you need and that's what it is you know but then I finally did not meet the person because I've already been with them and got back with the person so we can't always feel like oh love is not ahead for me or nobody's gonna want me because I was thinking like that for the longest that I was not going to find nobody. Nobody wanted me. And then I was like, I don't even care. I don't even want a man. I'd rather just be by myself. Men are a headache. And this is the way that I felt for the longest. And sometimes I do say that. I say that to my man all the time. Like, look, let me tell you something. I don't need you to be irritating me. He was like, you don't need... I said, listen. He's like, oh, yeah, I know. You always say you don't need a man. And I feel that way. Like, I don't need a man to justify anything that I do. I don't need a man to do anything for me. I am my own self, and I do my own shit, okay? Yeah, I love you being here in my life. We are together. But if you're about to stress me out and aggravate me, then poof, be gone. I'm not going to be aggravated by no male species, okay? And if I was a, a, a lesbian, a no female species either. I'm just not going to let anybody aggravate me so for the longest and my attitude is still kind of shitty like that like you know what I'm not gonna be aggravated I'm not gonna let anybody aggravate me I'm 41 years old and I've been through enough bullshit in my life to where this is my time to shine and not even shine but just to be cool and chill the fuck out and enjoy life and I moved all the way across the country to do that and to get the fuck away from the bullshit and the headaches and that's what I'm going to do and if you're going to come here and irritate and fuck up my vibe and my feng shui then you're going to be out of luck because I'm not dealing with it either and so this is the way that I feel still but do I feel like oh nobody's going to want me Sometimes I feel that way too still. Like, okay, well, you know what? Let me just stay with my my, my man because nobody else is going to want me. I feel that. But I'm not even concerned because I want him and that's all I want and I'm all he wants. So I hope, okay? But um, I'm not even concerned about another man. But, yeah, we've all had our times in a relationship and I will say this. I was really, really happy back in the days when me and my ex-husband was together but he brought too much bullshit in a relationship with his drinking and then his mom and his sister fighting me and my mother. Like, it was just too much. His family is so mean and nasty. They don't like me. They didn't like me from the jump because I'm light-skinned and I had kids already. Um, always talking about the light skins. Like, what's wrong with being light-skinned? Somebody tell me, okay? I never said anything about them being dark-skinned or anything like that, but... It was always an issue with that family, so if I could do it over again, I would have never got married. And I would have probably left him alone a long time ago, you know what I mean? But you live and you learn, and I will say this, I have two beautiful girls from that, and I'm happy with that. And I love them to pieces, they are my, they're my world. But as far as him, well, you know what, I hope he gets together, get it together. And for you, Miss Happiness, I hope you get it together too. And... Figure out what you want to do. Sometimes you can't keep working on shit. Some things you just can't fix. And it's sad to say, you know. And I'll be the first to tell you. I worked on it a lot. Worked on it. Went to counseling. Took him to rehab for drinking. All of that. All of that. I've worked on it a lot. And I guess it just couldn't be fixed. And sometimes you don't want to feel like you're giving up. But sometimes you just got to wave that little white flag and say, you know what? I want to end this now before it gets any worse than it already is. Just for my sanity and for the kids' sanity. And remain friends and cordial to one another. Sometimes you got to look at it like that. So, you guys, 
I hope you enjoyed this real talk session. I was really supposed to do three, but I got so deep into this one that I wasn't able to. So I promise I will do three next week for you guys. So like I said, if you want a real talk, you can go ahead and send in your messages. Um, and let Miss Happiness and Alexia know what you guys think. And have you ever been married and divorced and share your stories like you know my divorce video I did post it on YouTube and it's still up because I'm very happy that I got divorced you know some people don't get happy I was really really happy because it was long overdue and I was just crying and because I was so happy and that's like fucked up to be but you know sometimes a person has a control over you and you feel like so just like caged. It's a life lesson. Everybody goes through some shit. You know, my dad has been married three times um, to my mom, to, four times. He's on his fourth wife. But this one, I do believe he's gonna keep. You know what I mean? I, I think he's gonna keep her. Either way, I love her. She's a, she's a great woman. But sometimes you just gotta go through a cycle until you hit the right fucking spin and you be just like, yes! And I think that's what happened for me. And hopefully it'll happen for Miss Happiness. So on that note, stay diva and devolicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys on my next video.